Welcome everybody to ConvergeML and in this video I'm going to talk about the key differences between Scikit and Stats models and why you want to choose one over the other and what those circumstances might be. Let's get started. <music> Now before I talk about the key differences between these two packages and also take you through some of the code, let's go back in history and look where these two packages are coming from. Right about in 2007, scikit-learn project had started through Google Summer of Code. And that's through those humble beginnings, as you now see, scikit-learn is like a really good package which, with so many features. Similarly, stats models was actually a part of scipy.stats, which is a very famous library. In about 2009, it became part of the Google Summer of Code. It was, it matured and was corrected and then was released as a separate package, which we now know as stats models. Let's go through the page of first stats models um, and, and see what it has to offer. If I go to stats models, the first page that we see is this. This is what we greeted with, gives you like a little bit of introduction and then there is some code and shows you, you know, how you can actually fit your data, what are the ways, what is the output that you can expect from, um, from, from uh, ordinary least squares, for example. And it shows you some, some more examples. If you go into examples, um, you see that there are many examples here for a lot of um, regression uh, analysis. Um, and, you know, yeah, so it keeps going, plotting, um, again, GLMs, um, and we keep going, robust regression, and a bit of statistics as well, hypotheses, testing, and so on and so forth. Um, then we come to time series. Now, time series is one of the features that stats models offer. Um, and, and this is one of the primary reasons why uh, people gravitate towards uh, stats models. But nowadays, there are many more packages available uh, which do time series really easily. Uh, and those packages are like SK Time, Darts, and also FB Profit, which is now renamed as Profit. It comes from Facebook. Now, those are excellent packages and they really uh, take away some of the, you know, some of the details that you need to know when you need to do time series and they make it a little bit easier um, and their documentation is also, also great. So I will def certainly um, tell you to check that out. Um, all right. So, yeah, so it, it, time series is, of course, one of the powerful features that people uh, use uh, stats models for and you can see it just keeps going on and on and on. So really good um, package for a lot of regression analysis, statistical analysis, also um, for time series. Great, right? And I'm gonna show you an example um, right at the end uh, between comparing, uh, you know, between stats models and scikit-learn. So we'll come to that in a moment. Um, but before we do that, let's jump over to scikit-learn now. And let's take a look at what it has to offer. Now, again, scikit-learn has, if I click on, you know, has classification, regression, clustering, dimensional energy reduction, model selection, pre-processing. So it has like, it's a suite of, so it provides a suite of tools that lets you do um, a modeling piece from end to end in a way that you can start with your, with your data uh, depending on what task it is, you can use a specific model, uh, use you know certain feature selection methods, um, pre-process your data, of course, before you, you sort of select that. So you you could you could do a lot of um, a, a lot of things. Also, you can create some you know partial dependency plots uh, to examine um, the behavior of your model, and so on and so forth. So so there is a lot going on in in Scikit, but one of the key differences between these two is the approach that they have. Stats models, as it says, is, comes from statistics, right? So it has a very statistical background. 
for a lot of the outputs that you will see, for example, you know, even on on the front page of the of this uh, of, of their page, you see some of the output looks like coefficient, standard error, t value, probability, um, you know, for for for, the, for this t value, then some confidence interval for the coefficients, and a lot of other statistics. So it provides you with a lot of information um, in a very classical uh, statistics um, way. Now, while you compare this with scikit, that doesn't happen, right? Um, and you essentially get a list of uh, coefficients. Now, to illustrate that, let's jump um, to a notebook that I have open right here. So I have this notebook open right here. And again, this is just to show you how you can fit a simple linear regression model um, through scikit and stats models and how is the output uh, from these two models, uh, from these two packages, and what are the key differences. All right. So here I've just got a bunch of um, you know packages that I'm loading. Most importantly, um, I'm loading this linear regression from sklearn and of course there's the stats models package. I also load uh, the Boston dataset which is the dataset of uh, house prices in the, in the Boston area in the United States. So I load that data uh, right here and there's a bunch of you know explanation of what those features are. We're not really here to you know, probably solve a problem here at this point, but we're just going to look at the API and the output. So you can see here that um, the first thing that uh, I do here for for, um, for using stats models, SM is, is is stats models, as you can see, right? So that's stats model. I'm going to add a constant. So here I'm adding a constant saying, oh, I've got my data, add a constant to that. What does that mean? That means adding an intercept. So it will have like ones um, for, 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 for a column. So I'm just going to concatenate that. And it's going to be the intercept or the bias, as you may also know it by. And then after that, we have, um, we call sm.ols, which is OLS is the, is, is the ordinary least squares method. And we call that class and we, we give, the first thing is we give Y, which is my target and X is the set of features that uh, I have used um, for to predicting Y. Um, now, when you go to the documentation, you will see uh, some of the terms like exogenous and endogenous variables. Now, exogenous essentially means uh, variables, um, which are like the, the, var the variable X. Right. These are the features that your target depends on. Right. And uh, endogenous essentially means your, your target variable. Right. So simply keep that in mind. Exogenous has an X. So that's it's, it's your X variables. And of course, endogenous then is, is your target. Right. So again, the, these terms come from economics and that's why they're um, part of um, of stats models in, in, the, in the terminology. You won't find these um, terminologies existing in scikit-learn is because scikit-learn has an approach from a machine learning perspective. Anyways, I, I take that um, object, I'm going to fit that, and then I create a summary, right? I'm, I'm going to call a dot summary method on top of that. And then, so that's the way of using stats models, right? Um, now, for scikit-learn, it's, it's pretty simple. You just take linear regression. Linear regression has certain, um, you know, arguments to that. I'm just, at this point, I'm just taking, um, you know, the default ones. And then I, so I just call linear regression and then I just call fit. In this case, I, I call my X features first um, and, and Y, that's my target. So it's sort of flipped. Um, so here we had Y and X, here we have X and Y. And then what we have is um, is for summary, um, and if you want the summary, what we have to do here in in scikit-learn is is you have this um, uh, you know within within the class uh, within this object you have uh, coefficients, so you just call that, 
and I've just created a pandas data frame. And then we can actually view these two uh, these two outputs. So I have I have that open on the side here. So this first output comes from stats models. And again, as I, as I told you previously, that it provides you with a lot of st classical statistics um, sort of output, right? It gives you the coefficients, the standard error, the T value, the probability, and, and the confidence interval of these uh, coefficients. Now, mostly the reason that you need this, um, and it's sort of helpful, is you look at the P value and you say, aha, you know, this value is greater than 0 0.05, which is normally our threshold. Um, and so this feature isn't adding anything uh, to the model. Um, and so we can drop that. So you sort of use that as um, a feature reduction um, elimination sort of technique. Here is just saying that, well, it is 0 0.7, so it's definitely high. Um, and I would say that this value is essentially zero. So null hypothesis here is that the, 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 the value is zero here. And if, um, if, it is, if the value is greater than 0 0.05, then we're saying that we fail um, to reject the null hypothesis and, um, and, and, and that, uh, you know, this has to be, uh, this is essentially, um, this, this is zero. And so we can drop this. And of course, so that's how it's basically used. And you have uh, other statistics like the F statistic, um, some of the model metrics like R squared, adjusted R squared, AIC, BIC. Again, these are um, st uh, statistics to, to know how your model is doing. It provides you certain, um, you know, um, warnings as well that there is um, maybe a chance of uh, multicollinearity uh, between, you know, some of these features, you know, they could be highly correlated with each other. So you might want to drop that. You want to look at a correlation analysis and so on and so forth. So, yeah. So, again, it provides you all of that information. Now, for scikit, that's not the case. Um, you get the coefficients, and, and these are the coefficients. Now, these coefficients w actually match this coefficient, right? Um, so, in, in terms of that, this is, this is these are exactly the same, but you don't get these output. And that's why <clears throat> there is a difference in approach between scikit and stats models. Now, scikit will tell you that at this point, um, you know, what your approach should be is either you use an estimator, um, which you can find. So again, if I move to uh, here, if, you, if I go to scikit, then it will say that, you know, you could go to, um, you know, dimensionality reduction and in, in feature selection and use some of these sort of methods to, um, you know, to, to eliminate your, your features and select the best ones, right? So recursive feature elimination and, you know, you can do some univariate analysis as well, um, you know, removing features with low variance. If, if there is a feature which has just one value, you know, pop it, or, or, you know, across all, 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 the, all the rows, um, um, then you basically don't need that. It's not adding any value. So, yeah. So specifically, you have this, um, these methods that you can use to, to use, um, to eliminate these features. So it works, it works well. But again, this is, um, it doesn't have like the p-value um, hypotheses testing and so on and so forth. So you wouldn't find that um, in, in scikit-learn uh, for most of the, you know, for majority of the mo models um, that we have. And, and there are a lot of those, right? And as you can see that if I go in, I think classification, you can see that linear models, you know, support vector machines, yeah, it just the list keeps going on and on and on and on. Right, you have all of this, and and you also have uh, clustering. So yeah, so various methods for 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 for, for uh, clustering as well. So yeah, there's, there's just a lot. There, there's a lot to offer um, in this in 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 Scikit. Also, you could create your pipelines, right? So machine learning pipelines. So what that will do is you so you have like a sequence of steps that you will do. And then you can actually create like a recipe uh, for your models, and you can you can step through those. And some of those features are really um, useful from Scikit-Learn as well. And I hope you found this really useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe the channel, and I will create more videos such as these 
and keep bringing new content. And so take care and I'll see you back on the channel.